Hi everyone, welcome to Orgo Essentials, not your basic organic chemistry tutorial, episode 5. In this episode, we'll talk about what resonance is, practice drawing Lewis structures that have resonance, and go over some common misconceptions about resonance. Let's get started! In the last video, we discussed formal charge. Formal charge is a great way to find the correct Lewis structure for a molecule. If the charges on the individual atoms don't add up to the overall charge of the molecule, you've done something wrong. However, sometimes a molecule is best represented by more than one Lewis structure, with one charge located on more than one atom. This is called resonance. Fortunately for us, Resonance only occurs in certain molecules with double or triple bonds. If you see a molecule such as methane with only single bonds, you don't have to worry about resonance. Here is the complete Lewis structure for the acetate ion. As you can see, there are two different structures, drawn together in brackets and joined with a double-headed arrow. These different structures are called resonance structures, or resonance forms. Though we draw multiple structures for molecules with resonance, these individual drawings don't accurately show the molecule. In real life, the molecule is a combination, an average of these structures, with characteristics from both of them. Neither Lewis structure is the actual structure for the molecule. Here are the resonance structures for nitrate, NO3-. As you can see, in each structure, every atom has exactly a full octet. No more, no less. Even when the double bond is in a different place, the atoms are satisfied. Remember that these different structures are not different compounds. They're just different ways of representing a compound. Because they represent the same molecule, resonance structures always have the same overall charge, same atoms, and same atom placement. Remember, only move electrons around, not atoms. The Lewis structures only show the possible electron locations. The electrons are not actually moving around, as resonance structures may appear to suggest. Here are the resonance structures for nitromethane, CH3NO2. Again, the actual molecule is an average of its resonance structures. Because the actual molecule is an average, Molecules with resonance can sometimes be drawn with a combined representation, like this. With this representation, it's easier to see how the NO bonds aren't alternating between single and double bonds. They're a combination of the two types of bonds. In fact, resonance structures were discovered when molecules with double and single bonds were found experimentally to have bonds of equal length and strength not as long as a normal single bond, and not as short as a normal double bond. Similarly to the bonds, the negative charge isn't jumping from oxygen atom to oxygen atom. Instead, each oxygen atom has a partial negative charge. This is represented by a lowercase delta. With resonance structures, the electrons in the charges that are shifting around are spread out, or delocalized. Delocalized electrons are not associated with any one pair of bonded atoms. They are spread out equally. Let's do a few examples of drawing Lewis structures with resonance. We'll start with the ion H2CnH2+. We'll go through our usual process of drawing Lewis structures. There are four hydrogen atoms present with one valence electron each, plus a carbon atom with four valence electrons, plus a nitrogen atom with five valence electrons, and our positive charge removes one electron. This gives us a total of 12 valence electrons to work with. From our molecular formula, we know that the skeleton is going to look like this, with the hydrogens on the outside. When we connect these atoms, we use up 10 valence electrons, and we can put the last two between carbon and nitrogen, like this. All of our atoms have a full octet, but when we calculate formal charge, we see that nitrogen has a positive charge on it. This makes sense, 
the molecule is an ion, so there needs to be a charge somewhere. Now, one of our instincts as organic chemists is to move around some electrons into that positive charge. Remember that atoms with positive charges want electrons. They are electron deficient. Luckily for us, we have some pushable electrons in the double bond right next to the positive charge. When we scooch those electrons over, the charge on the nitrogen goes away, and a charge on the carbon atom appears. That double bond turns into a lone pair on nitrogen. A few things to point out here. First, when we draw resonance structures, we can show where the electrons are moving to with curvy arrows. This is fairly standard for organic chemistry everywhere. Second, our pushable electrons will always come from either a double bond like this, a triple bond, or a lone pair. We cannot take electrons from single bonds connecting two atoms. Third, when we scooch the electrons over, we must move them right next door, like we just did. Electrons are not able to cross an entire molecule in one step. Fourth, resonance structures should always have the same overall charge and the same number of electrons. Finally, we know that we're done drawing resonance structures because there are no more available electron-deficient atoms, and there are no more pushable electrons. The hydrogen atoms do not want electrons, and we already traded between the carbon and the nitrogen atoms. Don't forget to draw a double-headed arrow brackets, and the charge in the outside upper right corner. We finished! Next, let's do H2SO4. This Lewis structure will have one valence electron from each of the hydrogen atoms, six from the sulfur atom, and six from each of the oxygen atoms, for a total of 32 electrons. We know that the hydrogen atoms must be on the outside, and that nature loves symmetry, so we get a molecular skeleton that looks like this. When we fill in all of the single bonds, we use up 12 valence electrons, with 20 left over. Remember that sulfur is a third row element, so it can hold more than eight electrons. With this in mind, we can draw a structure that looks like this, with double bonds on the top and bottom oxygen atoms, no charges, and 12 electrons on sulfur. Let's rearrange a little. We can scooch two electrons from that top double bond onto the oxygen atom, producing a structure that looks like this. Now, there's a negative charge on oxygen, but there's also a positive charge on sulfur, so the overall charge of the molecule is still zero. Let's go back to our first structure, and this time, move the electrons in the bottom double bond. This produces a similar resonance structure. Our final resonance structure occurs when both the top and bottom oxygen atoms have these negative charges, and our central sulfur atom has a charge of plus two. Note that every atom still has a full octet. Also note that the side oxygen atoms and their hydrogen atoms remain unchanged. That's it for this video. Like before, I've included a link to a document with some practice problems for anyone who wishes to get some more practice with resonance structures. Remember that practice only makes better. Note that this video does not cover all important aspects of resonance in organic chemistry. It is simply an introduction. Later videos will cover the energy between resonance structures and major and minor contributors. If you have any questions so far, feel free to email me or comment down below. The next video will be about molecular shapes. I'll see you then.